Really excited to, to carry on with another episode of this series with Jordan Hobbs from over at Michigan, someone who took a really big leap this past year and someone I'm very excited to watch, uh, you know, with with a pretty new team this year, kind of taking on a different role as well. Jordan, first and foremost, how are you doing? Very good. Thanks for having me on today. Yeah, no doubt. I'm. Uh, it, it's fun because like, you know, you go back through and watch stuff like obviously I watched you guys throughout the entire year, but a lot of my summer and early fall has been going back and rewatching things from 23 24 and um you kind of forget how insane some of these games were like the big 10 was already absolutely wild this last year and i just have no idea what to even think it's going to look like this year with with everything else kind of as an influx but um i know a lot of this summer for you was kind of being able to take a bit of a step back from basketball and, and really focus on your internship through ross which to anyone who is unaware like I have no idea how you do Ross Business School and <laughs> be a D1 athlete at the same time. I went to Michigan State, so I had a lot of friends who were at Ross, and like that workload is insane. So how do you kind of keep that balance and, um, and and stay on top of everything? We have a huge support system here, and our professors are great with us too. Um, a lot of it is like group project based things as well. So um, every every group I've been in has been great with like going in the evenings after practice, things like that, and kind of accommodating to my schedule, which has been super helpful. It gets really tough when you're in groups with other athletes, though, and your schedules just completely are different, like some practice in the morning, some at night. So that's when it gets really tough. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's I, it was definitely harder, like sophomore, junior year. It's a little, it's it's evened out a little bit now, and I'm kind of coasting, not really, but it's a little bit easier yeah. senior year. You know? Yeah, you get no, that last you, year. You get everything under your belt a little bit. You have the feel for how to do it, and, you know, you kind of have a swing of it. Um, that makes yeah. sense for sure. Um, you know, off that, too, just, like, kind of looking at this past year, I know um, that you spent some time, like, obviously when you were in New York, hanging out with some of the Columbia players, playing some pickup. Uh, what was maybe your biggest takeaway from that? Or was it just kind of, like, just fun, just just getting the feel still? Um. Yeah, I mean, it was so fun, like just even playing with a different team and seeing seeing how what their playing style is. Um, and they're just like such a successful program, especially in the Ivy and making the tournament last year. So it was just like cool to see the work that they put in. Um, honestly, I think the biggest thing I took away was just like friendships from that. Like, yeah. I just wanted to touch a ball and that's what they gave me. And then on top of that was just like some good good runs and um good friendships and we still keep in touch and um keep up with one another I can't wait to see them play this year because I mean I just like know all of them now um but yeah that was that was such a good time I'll, I'll remember that forever just just going up there um I mean their their campus was on lockdown too so that was mm -hmm. like interesting getting in I had to like sneak in a couple times but <laughs> um it was a great time yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, hey, that's the entire part of college. If you haven't, if if you haven't tried to uh, to sneak into somebody's place, then you know you're you're doing things wrong, obviously. Um, but going off that too, just looking back at this last year as a whole, um, I think like obviously you've been a player who's kind of just taken a step every year, right? Like you were um, on some some really fantastic teams and have to kind of like you know learn the ropes, go from there, but. What was what would you say was maybe the biggest thing for you this past year? Because obviously, I think you can say playing time was really pivotal. That's something that improved for you. But also, like just across the board, you became a more efficient player, um, and I think your confidence really showed out as well this past year. So, uh, even just like looking at Big Ten play, like I think you went you know early on in the season. I think you had some really great games, but then it felt like you really found consistency as the year went on. So, what would you say was kind of the biggest part of you finding that groove and 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 kind of being able to build on that? Yeah, I mean, you hit it on the head with confidence. Um, that was definitely the biggest thing. And I think just like the freedom to play like sophomore year, you know, like Leah Brown was getting majority of shots as she should, like she's a yeah. phenomenal player. So like I was playing, getting fifth, sixth amount of shots. So like, I just couldn't play fully free to how I do. But I think this past year, it was like, I coach had the confidence in me to, to, read the game and and make the passes that I knew I could make and um and she trusted the shots that I took and I think that elevated my confidence even more like also too like if I made a mistake I knew I knew she had the confidence in me to keep me in the game like and I, I would I'd play through that mistake um so I think I think that was just the biggest thing like I was just able to play free and play off my teammates I think our chemistry was pretty good especially towards the end of the year like Big Ten tournament we really made a jump um beating Indiana was like so huge for us um, and I think that's when we really clicked as a team. 
Yeah, that game, I'll never forget that game. It was kind of wild because I was, you know, I so I I worked at the athletic this past year and did like bracketology for them. So like when it hits that point of the year, I'm like, I had six screens open, right? So I was like, all right, I can turn off the Big Ten quarterfinals and go on to something else. And then I checked my score app like five minutes later. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, okay, I need to <laughs> let me let me re-up real quick, get my screen back on, because I'm gonna have to write about this in about 30 minutes. So, you know, uh that was awesome. Uh that was a very fun game to watch. Uh especially I mean I went back and watched the fourth quarter again a couple times. But yeah, like exactly. That was very much a big swing in momentum because too like i think if you guys don't win that game you don't go to the ncaa tournament so it's like yeah know, i agree and that. like maryland maryland beating ohio state earlier that day like wasn't helping our bracket chances yeah. so we were we were on the ropes um and like a 30 point swing is absolutely insane yeah but it was wild uh was wild. and speaking on maryland too man that just the the big 10 tournament gave me nightmares it was fun to watch but like work uh bounce light work life that was the worst work life bounce I ever had was in March. So yeah, thanks to you guys. I appreciate it. Um it was very worth yeah. it though. Um but I wanted to ask too kind of going off that uh just from listening to you in, in some other interviews, it seems like you were just very tapped in with everything going on in basketball. Like you have a really good understanding of other teams. Are you somebody who just kind of always has basketball in the background or you're just falling through scores and stuff? I just like oh I'm always watching it, yeah. especially college. Um I feel like in the summer, I kind of take a step back. So I don't watch the W as much. I try to, especially with like Ariel being on our staff last year, yeah. try to watch the Mist as much as I can. Um, but once, once like November 1st hits, I am purchasing ESPN plus and yep. it's like on my computer TV phone. Like I'll be at dinner watching a game, like especially the big 10. I love watching the big 10, even in non-conference play um, and just keeping up. Like it's, it's always talked about in our house too. I live with two other teammates. So we're just like, Oh my gosh, did you see this game? Did you see this? So yeah. it's fun. And then obviously when big 10 play hits, like you just have to keep up because you never know what's going to happen. Yeah, no, I love that. Speaking my language and watching at dinner with everybody else. Uh, yeah. It's funny too. Cause this year I just, I'm excited because of how different conferences are going to be, but also like, what are these packages going to look like in terms of having to buy access to watch these games? Uh, so I'm not excited about that. I'm excited for the games themselves, but also like, I feel like if you're an athlete, you should just get like big 10 plus for free, but you know, that is such a good point. You they should. didn't ask me about it, but I think that it makes sense to me. Right. Um, I wanted to ask too, I know you played hockey, which is something I common. I, I grew up playing hockey too, but it's fun because you can really see that and how you play the game. Um, I think especially like, a lot of players your size part of like to me what makes you stand out is like you know a prospect is like you're legit like six two six three I think a lot of people who say the six two six three are, are not actually six two six three um but you bring a lot of really good movements that I think people just don't often have at that height um mm -hmm. and I think you see a lot of that particularly laterally out of hockey like that just gives you a different range of motion than than most people get um, would you say that's something you kind of feel or is that something you thought about before? Um, or is that just kind of something that has, has, has grown naturally for you? I think it's grown kind of naturally. I haven't really, it makes sense now that you bring it up, like some of like the smoother movements, I feel like with hockey and like balance too. Um, like I take a lot of off balance shots, but I still feel like I'm in control of yeah. like my body and stuff. I think I did play baseball. I think that has helped me a lot with passing. Yeah. Um, and I've thought about that before, like my one handed handed passes, like off the dribble, I think um, baseball has helped me a ton and like full court passes. Obviously, you need a pretty solid arm for that. But yeah, yeah. no, that actually makes a lot of sense, too. I didn't know about baseball. And that makes a t yeah, the velocity you put on stuff one handed is pretty impressive. So we'll definitely be diving into that. Um, I wanted to ask, too, about just coming to U of M in general, because um, I was talking to a couple of friends who do more of the high school scouting instead of pro stuff. And, you know, a lot of them pointed out, they were like, you know, they, they thought you were going to go more of a mid-major plus route. Like, be, and obviously I know you were committed to Rice when Tina was there before she ended up taking the Washington job. What was that like uh, kind of dipping back into the pool of recruiting right at the end? And obviously, I mean, when Michigan calls, that's, that's pretty, that's, that's different. That's like, okay, wow. Being a player who was kind of set on like, I'm going to go the mid-major route. I know academics were important to you. Obviously Rice is an incredible school as is Michigan. Um, but like, was it kind of like a having to um, 
re-realize your potential a little bit and kind of recognize that there were different doors open for you than you thought? And how did you kind of approach that? Because I think that's, you know, that's just not always very common for somebody to have have the the go going from like, okay, well, I, I have this very solidified route to now it's like, oh, wow, okay, there's a lot more on the table for me than I maybe recognized. Yeah, definitely. I mean, obviously, when I committed, I guess now it's not that uncommon to commit like in the fall of your junior year, but it was like pretty early still. And I was a late bloomer. So like, I only had mid major offers, like not even any calls with power fives, like maybe some some smaller ones that weren't doing great in their conference. But um no offers like committed rice I knew I wanted to go there like if if coach Langley had stayed like I'm sure I would have been super happy there um but when she left I was like I just need to reevaluate and and I was realizing that maybe Houston was just like a little too far from home um yeah it just would have been tough with like a, a whole new coaching staff that I I wasn't didn't have a great relationship with yeah I like didn't build it like I did with coach Langley um but when I opened my recruiting, um, my AAU coach was like, yeah, you can, you can go power five. And and I was like, that's kind of crazy, but like, we'll just see what happens. And Rice was like still in, in the talks, like when it came down to it, it was between Rice and Michigan still. And I mean, one day I was like 51% Michigan and 49% Rice. And my mom was like, you got to make the call. Yeah. Um. So then, then I called coach Rico, but yeah, it was, it was very shocking, I would say. And I mean, once I committed, I had like maybe five weeks until I reported to Michigan. Um, that whole process was just super stressful because like you're graduating high school and all these people know where they're going. Like also like the application process that Michigan had to open it again for me. Yep. Like, yeah, it was it was it was a stressful time. But back to your question, um, I did have to re-realize like my potential and gain confidence that I didn't even know I had like. I had complete imposter syndrome coming here. I remember coming on campus the first day. I hadn't even ever visited, like done an official visit or anything, like had to learn the girls' names that first day. Um, and I just remember telling my parents, like, what am I doing at the University of Michigan? Like, yeah. we're Ohio State fans growing up. And that was the team up north, like huge school, great academics. We always heard like good things, but obviously we hated them. Um, but I was just like, what am I going, what am I doing going to school with 40, 45,000 people? Like, this is crazy. Um, and then freshman year, like you don't play a lot and, and it stinks, but I was just like, I know I'm, I'm meant to be here. Like, I love the people here. Um, I love the culture of the team. And, um, and ever since then coach just like poured into me and, and helped me realize the confidence and realize that I belong here. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think that's, it's a really interesting part, like you're talking about, because I think especially when you come into a team that is already so established. Like, I mean, you have players like Nas here who is, I still think it's, I mean, going back and watching her highlights from, from U of M is still wild to me. So like, just what a player, man. But um, exactly. I mean, like that team was fantastic. They had a really strong foundation. And so you kind of know coming in like, all right, this is, there's probably not a huge playing role here. So how do you kind of grapple with that? Because again, I think a lot of people can struggle with that initial year or so of, you know, if you're coming in, you're not like, like you, you mentioned, like you definitely come off as a late bloomer um, and I, you've, you've bloomed now quite a bit, but like, I think the point is like, everybody has very different developmental paths. Right. And I think um, being able to come in and show, right. Like, okay, I'm not going to maybe necessarily make an impact right away on the court, but how do I find other ways to, you know, find comfort and confidence in what I'm doing. So what was that like for you in, in finding that? Like, obviously, again, like you still made a part that the bench mob that year was very fun as as with the next year as well. But, you know, how did that kind of come come about for you? Um, yeah, I mean, I see with our freshmen now a little bit, just like struggling with how they're playing in practice and things like that. And I remember like going back from practice to the dorm and just like beating myself up and being like, wow, today was terrible. Yeah. Like, I just absolutely, I didn't even make a shot. I probably only shot like three times total. Like it's hard and it's a grind those few years, especially mentally. Um, when I, when I started playing sophomore year, that was the thing that was different. Like physically you're more tired, but like mentally you're like ready to go. But if you're not playing like mentally, it is draining and mm -hmm. you have to show up every day with energy. Um, but I think coach Arrigo did a really good job of pouring into me. Like I mentioned, like it, she she couldn't notice if I was having a rough week and she would pull me into her office and just be like you got to trust the process and and our leaders like Danielle and Nas were so phenomenal and and Danielle's stories 
similar to mine, but even her journey was even harder. I mean, she didn't play till the end of her junior year and I can't, that's so, so many props to her for doing yeah. that because that is really tough. Um, but she would just give me advice and same with Emily. Um, they just helped me so much through that. And just saying that, like, I'm, old, I'm a freshman, like freshmen don't typically play anyway. And we're an elite eight team. Like, I mean, that's all there is to it. Like you shouldn't, not that they didn't, not that they said this, but like now looking back, I should never have stepped on that court. Like one game <laughs> I told coach the other day, like I didn't deserve to be on that court. Like those girls were so tough. Um, but yeah, I mean, I just had such a good support system with the team and, and coaches. Yeah. Well, it's so interesting too, like you're mentioning, cause I think, um, I mean, you can definitely feel that in the moment, right? Like I've definitely like not in the same realm, but like in certain ways, like I feel that like, you know, you're with, people who are like 10, 15 years of your peer who have been doing this for a long time. And it's hard to like recognize in the moment, like, okay, well, they have 15 extra years of experience. And it's more like, okay, well, what they're doing right now is so far ahead of where I'm at. Um, but now I think, again, you're going to have some of the freshmen coming in looking at you like, well, look at Jordan. She's like, a, you know, going to be like an all conference level player this year. Like, how do I get to that? Like, that's so different. And yeah, it's just like, being able to put that time in perspective is really difficult in the moment. So that makes a ton of sense. And does that kind of play into as well? I've heard you say in interviews before that your growth and maturity is probably the biggest thing for you over the last year or so. What did, what, what did all does that look like for you in terms of just becoming a more mature person and how you handle things? Yeah. I mean, I mentioned a little like how I would beat myself up um, freshman and even sophomore year. Um, but like, I went to the camp, um, after sophomore year, I like my faith is super important to me. Yeah. And, um, it was that summer and it was in Colorado, like a week long. And after that, it just like helped me understand that, like, I can leave basketball on the court and like with the team being a leader, like I can continue to pour into girls off the court. Like, but what happens on that court can stay on it. Like I can get on people, and they can get on me and we can just leave it at that. Um, but continuing to build those relationships off the court. But like, I think junior year, like the biggest thing last year was I would go to practice, good, bad day, whatever it was, like I would go home and I I wouldn't even think about basketball. And that was just like, it wasn't even consciously that I was thinking to do that, but like, it just happened that way. And I just think it was like such a, re a release for me because I used to put so much pressure on myself and just like, I would I'm like I'm a competitor like you're gonna you're gonna think about basketball all the time but like now I can just go and watch a game and have fun watching it instead of just like comparing myself to people or thinking about how I'm performing compared to the next person so um, I would say that's probably the biggest growth and maturity that I've had um, I mean it's it's been like life-changing to not have to think about it every second of the day how I'm performing yeah, no, I mean, I think that makes a lot of sense. And I appreciate that a ton. Because I don't know when I was like, a little like, I'm I'm only 27. So it's not like I'm a million years older. But like, you know, when I was like 18, 19, I just used to think all the time in my sport. I was like, you know, like, oh, well, I have to be doing this because, you know, nobody else is getting up to run at four, four o'clock in the morning. And it's like, no, dude, you need to sleep. Like, you know, and I think that the coming to the realization of understanding, we all have 24 hours. And I need to maximize what I'm doing. And for the most part, me sitting here agonizing over me fucking up once or twice in practice is not helping me in the long run because it doesn't fix anything. It doesn't actually make me feel better. And then I'm probably just going to do worse tomorrow. Like, um, I think that's a really big realization to have because some people don't have that hit them until they're two or three years into being a professional player. And like, it's just not easy stuff to deal with in the moment. So it's, uh, yeah, I think kind of like you talk about with the entire process of getting into being where you're at as a junior, like that's definitely the hard part, but now that you have that on your belt, it just makes it that much easier to kind of elevate to that next level for sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And I want to ask too, lastly, like in terms of just looking at, at you to the next level, is it something that you've thought about before? Uh, Cause I know, like we've talked about, like, you know, kind of being a late bloomer, you were thinking a lot more of going the mid major route. Is that something that you've kind of had in the back of your mind or, 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 or thought about it all? You mean going to like playing in the league and or overseas? Yeah. I've thought about it. Um, I just, I'm just letting life go. I like, I'm applying to jobs just to see, like have, have something in the back pocket. If, a great opportunity arises like I would definitely look into it um but I mean right now I'm just trying to have 
some security for next year. So sure. like I said, like applying to things and networking. Um, that's also the business. Like Ross is so competitive and like half the people have jobs already. So that's probably playing into it. Um, but yeah, I mean, if, if an amazing opportunity comes up, then I would, I would probably take it. So. Yeah, no, definitely. I think it's kind of like you're saying a lot of it's, you just don't really know until it happens. Uh, I was just talking about this with somebody yesterday, but the, the quickness with which things happen in, in basketball is just like nuts in the hiring and signing stuff. So, you know, just kind of depends on the timing for sure. Um, especially like, you know, having players like Nas and, and Leah, like you mentioned, um, what has it been like kind of having them as, as people that you can kind of uh, look up to is maybe the wrong way to put it, but like, you know, see have like similar paths to that. Um, having that kind of leadership style as well, too, as you kind of step into that next stage of like very much being a leader of, of this team this this coming season. Yeah, I, I think both of them just like had an eagerness to work hard. Mm. Um, that was like kind of Naz's leading style was like she was going to show you how hard to work. And like she might not have been as vocal as Danielle, but like she she ran the floor harder than anyone else. And she was getting treatment and doing film more than anyone else. Um, so I think that was probably the biggest thing with both of them, just like how hard they worked and and how much time they spent in the gym and bettering themselves in any in every possible. Um, and they still do that. And Nas has still been like such such a shoulder to lean on. Um, I call her every now and then and she just like is such a great person to bounce ideas off of and um any issues I have like being a leader, not issues, but any um, controversies or things on the team, um, I can just bounce ideas off of her. And, and she's just so amazing to talk to about it because she's been through it. And I mean, it's like third year in the league. So, um, I mean, she's killing it too, which is awesome yeah. to see. Yeah, no, it's been really fun to see her kind of figure her role out this year and really expand on that. Um, Cause yeah. again, like she's another player who's a great example in terms of talking of like, you know, it just takes time to find stuff and, um, so exactly like it's I, I love hearing that because again like having that in, in your back pocket and being able to like bounce things off her is really big um so all right we can get into the film now um as we're going through like tell me to pause anything like this conversation I, 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 there's no like bad clips or anything here like it's not there's like a ton of like you know anything negative it's just like I, it's mainly just like I really want to like look at your game and kind of analyze it together and and yeah there's a lot of good stuff to get into we're going to start with offense obviously have some defense to close out as well before we dive into the film, I'd like to take a moment to thank our sponsor for this video and series, State Champs. State Champs is a community-based streetwear brand with a brick-and-mortar sports coffee shop located in Kent, Ohio. Check out the link down below for a t-shirt collab we did, their catalog of apparel and accessories, and stop on by in person to catch a game and a cup of coffee as the WNBA postseason unfolds this fall. So I think I want to start off just in terms of talking about you're shooting like I think you as a shooter is like the biggest thing because again like when you look at the next level everything is about um continuing to expand offense and and become uh you know more pace more movement you know more spread out and again being somebody with your size that can shoot as well as you do is you know that's there it's just very rare to find players who can do that and I think one of the things that always stands out with you is your ability to relocate to I know part of the offense is there's a lot of screens a lot of movement but just being able to relocate on a dime is also part of your game that has really stood out. Um, especially like kind of finding that, like playing off of strong drivers and and players who can really get to the rim. What is maybe the biggest thing for you in kind of seeing those sight lines and making sure that you're set and ready in those spots? Yeah, I mean, we practice like filling behind all the time in practice or finding the open spot. Um, I just think I I continue to work on like, running full speed and getting just like the quick one, two into the shot. I it's helped a ton. Um, and just like staying as balanced as I can. Some of them are definitely like fading away, which sometimes like not great for me. I need to, I need to be more balanced, but, um, yeah, I think just like following the ball and reading where my teammates are going. I think that's also the biggest thing this year, like with a new team, we need to like build that chemistry and like know where each other are going to be. Um, but yeah, I mean, on this one, like Layla drove baseline and, and Alyssa set a great screen. That's probably one of her best attributes. Like Alyssa always knows where to screen. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, just falling behind that. Yeah, no, 100%. I think, yeah, just in general, like, I think part of what is so fun with you is you just, 
And again, part of it's the offense because you guys run a ton of continuity and getting stuff going with flare screens. But like you make it so hard to tag any kind of pick and roll because, again, you're good with lifting and you get your shot off so quickly, too. Um, That's one of the things like it's funny because your shot is like I wouldn't say set. It's like not, you know, it's not super set, but like your release point is so high that it just like it wouldn't even matter if you weren't getting off the ground because most guards just cannot guard that. Has your release point like always been that high? Because even like you don't really even dip that much either. There's a, if 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 it's in your pocket, it's just going right up. I used to dip a ton, and yeah. one of my coaches in AAU was like, "That's got to go. Like it has <laughs> to get quicker." Um, so shout out to him. But it was like probably freshman sophomore year when I like tweaked my shot and and stopped dipping. So um, also I think like one of the best parts of my shot, like Maddie Nolan taught me this, and mm-hmm. she's like, "That's how she shoots every time. It's just like the quick hop." I, yeah, I did it on this one. Um, that just like helps me get my shot up so much quicker. Yeah, no, I think that's a great point. The hop is so key because like, honestly, I think most of the times when your shot did get bothered this year was like, if somebody was right in your face and like, no shit, like, of course, you're gonna get your shot bothered. Somebody's right in front of you. But like, if you weren't able to like gather a little bit, because I think something that really helps you with like getting that momentum and, and balance is if you can like get a quick hop step into it. Or if you're like rising into something, you know, like it just makes it different and has a different momentum and feel to it too. Yeah, definitely. Um, Off this next one too, because part of what is again, like what's really fun to see is like, I think you really got to experiment more with doing stuff off the dribble this year, particularly out of screens. Like, and you hit a point early on, you know, I mean, later on in the year where teams just said, we can't go under on her anymore, which is, I mean, that's, it's, it's cool because it gives you just like new things to be able to do inside the arc. Right. But also like, it's kind of, you know, gives you some stuff to have to experiment with as well. But again, like just getting comfortable off the dribble, like how, how do you feel off the dribble compared to like being able to do things more off the catch kind of off movement like that? Um, Off the dribble is definitely an area I've been working on this summer, especially like mid range game. I Mm -hmm. feel like that's kind of been an area I've lacked. I mean, Layla killed it last year in the mid range and like, we obviously don't have that this year. So um, I just think, I think the mid range game is just an area that everyone could get better at. Like, I I think it's underused and undervalued. Um, But like, I think from the three, um, I don't use it that much, but I think this year might, I might need to be off the dribble a little bit more from behind the arc. Um, Just like having the ball in my hands more, especially. But yeah, yeah, no, I'm excited that you mentioned the mid-range because to me, that is like the biggest area I look at for you that like you already had some really good signs with it last year, but particularly like your float game is already so good, um, which is funny because like you mentioned in terms of being so on balance outside the arc, I feel like it's kind of interesting because like we'll talk about it a little bit. I think you, as much as you have like the balance outside the arc, you have to like figure out the balance inside the arc at times as well. And I think you did as the year went on. But it's like, you know, you kind of have to like relearn pacing and everything again when you get closed out on so hard. Um, But you already have like such good touch on stuff that I just think that, yeah, exactly. There's so much there for you that's exciting. Um, I wanted to just pull this clip too real quick because one of the things, again, that I like about your game, I know part of it too is like Kim is going to iron this the hell out of everybody. But you just kind of like breathe life in the ball. If you if you don't have something open – you move the ball, you move it well, and you move it fast. And I think, again, like just being able to quick entry to any kind of option is big time. Love getting like another thing I love about your game, too. You do a lot of stuff with angles that are really key. Like so often people are going to see this and just be like, oh, well, if I just get up on my tippy toes and I get it over the guard, I'm going to get to the post. And like, no, that's a really great way for the ball to get tipped and, and probably turn over. And you do a really good job of doing stuff, doing stuff, just kind of like hitting little side pocket stuff like it seems small, but I think it's really big and just kind of cutting down turnovers. Yeah, no, I, I agree completely. Um, yeah, I think our post play was obviously huge last year and we work on like, we work on every single type of angle with passing. Mm -hmm. Um, I think Cam like just caught the ball, all my passes last year. She made me look so good. Yeah. Um, Yeah. It does help to have a good post player for sure. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. I know. She was awesome. Um, Um, yeah, so I want to pull this one, too, because so it's back-to-back plays from the same game. Um, I really like this because, again, like, number one, what position would you say you kind of feel most comfortable at or would you consider yourself? Um, Probably power forward. Yeah. I, it's, like, honestly a mix between shooting or power forward. Like, I'm, I'm pretty comfortable at both. Yeah. 
Okay, cool. Because that's what I like. I it's always interesting to hear what people think. Because I think you again versatility really stands out in your game. Like I think you can pretty comfortably play a two through four, um, and that's what stands out in this game because Illinois will like they'll play four guards sometimes, but then they typically started with a power four this last year. And that just, I mean, you guys are able to use that, not just against Illinois, but against so many teams is like kind of a mismatch thing, right? Where when you guys went to you kind of playing as more of a four, it's just really hard to guard. Because again, th- we're already at the point in the season, nine games and where it's like, okay, we really just can't give her too much space to shoot. And that opens up, okay, cool. I have this drive, easy finish because you get a step. Um, you have a similar play coming back down. And again, just being able to take right off the bounce. And then you looking at that mid range game a little bit, um, getting into that touch on a runner, like you're able to, again, using the angles and just kind of being able to use your, your mismatch stuff to take advantage of some, maybe uh, even if they're bigger, like maybe potentially slower players. Yeah, definitely. I think that was like the biggest thing in this game taking advantage of. And then even against some of the other teams in the big 10, like I think it's shifting more to a four guard, conference Mm -hmm. but if they do play traditional fours like I think I have a pretty good advantage on them just because of my size like I think I do a fairly good job guarding them if they if they post me up um but I think offensively we just have like a huge advantage even if I'm not scoring every time just getting a step on them and help has to come over and finding the open man just like with my length I think um I can typically find the person who's open um but I thought I mean Illinois adjusted the second time we played them. Um, yeah. But I, I think that was probably the biggest thing in that game. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I like what you mentioned too, because I think that's such a big part of being such a good shooter and a player who can, obviously you do a lot more than you're shooting, but like, I think that's like kind of the bread and butter of your game, right? And being able to be such a threat, not just off the catch, but on the move, you know, you got used as a screener sometimes this last year too, like, okay, cool. Well, they have to guard you all the time. You can't be left open. And even if you aren't scoring, that opens things up in the offense in a way that it wouldn't necessarily if somebody wasn't shooting in your spot. So it opens up so much. And even like going off that too, like, again, having players who can inbound and be like, I, it feels like you had like a quarter of your made threes were like off inbounds this year. I went back through, I was watching all of your made threes again today. And I was like, man, like every single one, it feels like there's an inbound every other game. Um, what is like maybe the biggest key to you of being a, a, a good inbounds player? Cause you guys were very good off of like baseline stuff, obviously off the sideline. Like I know, like just by nature of like you're tall and you can pass the ball really well, but then having that extra movement threat, like so often teams are like, they try to not guard the inbounder as much as possible. So um, just kind of being able to showcase that stuff. What was, what do you feel like was kind of like the biggest aspect for you and being so productive at that this year? I think reading, my defender is Mm -hmm. probably the key to being a good inbound passer like she is helping over on Layla on that cut and once I see her head and once I see her feet in the paint like I know Kyra can seal her Taylor Mm -hmm. and I can get a three in the corner and like also they have to help on Layla because Layla can leap over Celeste and like she can get that she can get that layup um I thought that play was really well drawn like I don't know how you can really guard that yeah. And even if, even if she's guarding me, like Kyra could slip that and get a layup too. Um, I yeah, I think it all comes down to the inbound defender um, and how they're guarding, like if they're on ball or if if they're helping off of it. Yeah, no, I totally agree. And I really like that aspect. Like you're talking about all the twist stuff that you and Layla did this year was like, how do you even guard it? Right. Because she's so good going to the rim. You're so good going away. Like it's just a lot of difficulty in in, in, in defending that. Um, but also again, too, cause like just st- sticking out like there, again, there are players who are tall that can shoot, but like being able to get yourself set so quickly off movement is like, that's just different stuff than not a lot of people are able to do at a high level. Yeah. It was that hop step again. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well also like you mentioned learning the hop step, but like how long did it take for you to get comfortable with that? Because it is a big adjustment going from being somebody who's more like kind of shooting a little bit more set to becoming a player who was taking that hop step. Um, I think sophomore year, like in the fall, summer and fall, I started to really work on it. Like on the gun, I would just rep it out, like mm-hmm. put the gun to like three seconds and just like make myself shoot quicker. Um, like if, if you're making it that quick, then it, your feet have to adjust. And um, I think also I was just like getting myself off the move to like whether it was 
practicing rising and having a defender, like a practice player right there with a hand up and stuff like that. No, definitely. And yeah, speaking of off the move too, like just again, looking at more stuff, like you guys did a ton of like kind of faking, you know, running, running out of like Chicago stuff into like, all right, cool. Rising, firing off the screen. Like, again, it seems small in the moment, but like, that's just like so big being able to do that because that is really hard to defend with everything it opens up. Um, not really like a ton off that we, that we haven't hit on, but again, just like hitting again, that movement is like so, so big. Um, yeah. This one too, I think part of what's fun here is like, I think like we've talked a little bit about like, so yeah, you, you know, the shot right away. Um, getting into like your self-created stuff. I think there's even more room to get, get into that because like, I'm not expecting every shot to be like this, of course, because that's just like, you know, this was one of the biggest shots you guys had all year. Um, but like in terms of like, having that feel right because i think it's so different because one of the things about like getting yourself set up off off screen so well is you're really good at moving and it's hard for other people to keep up with that so you kind of inherently get space off that right but then when you have somebody else who's okay you're right in front of me it changes up what your space is so how do you kind of like is that something you kind of want to keep improving on like being able to do more out of you know maybe creating a little bit more out of uh out of like kind of triple threat stuff or or what where are you kind of at with that yeah, I I love anything off the dribble. Like if a ball gets swung to me and I'm like on the wing, I love attacking right away. Um I'm not I this one was just like end of shot clock. I also yeah. love end of shot clock cuz I know I'm like free to do whatever I want and like it's yeah. just like a free shot. Um but like this was just like a little more stagnant. Um mm-hmm. so that's why I took such a contested tough shot um which is not my favorite, but I would like to be able to like maybe um like dribble hesitation get them up and then attack off on her feet um if I had the time but yeah it was obviously well no it, but... for sure and like that's part of what I'm gonna be really excited to see with you this year is because I think you're gonna have to do a little bit of that this year like you're gonna probably be asked to do more of that um you know as the season goes in and like how do you I know obviously you're not there yet but have you kind of like thought through that of like you you just mentioned like not always wanting to take some of those shots like having to be a player who maybe has to take more shots than you want to at times it definitely excites me like Mm -hmm. be not I don't know what the the shot count will look like um like who's I'm I'm sure I'll increase the amount that I take um but I'm excited like I think I'm ready for it um I'm I'm ready to take the last shot in a game if we're if we're down three like I'm ready to take that three um I feel like some of them last year were drawn up for me too and and I was excited to be in that position um but like yeah I'm just I'm I'm excited to create for the team um and I mean teams are probably going to collapse when I drive and um just finding that open shooter like I mentioned earlier so it'll it'll be a fun offense this year we've put some things in that should be fun to watch yeah, I mean, it'll be dope, too, because you guys already play with, like, a lot of, like, like-sized players kind of playing with a lot of wings, and I think this year is just going to be even more so with that. Like, I mean, I know you've shouted her out quite a few times, but, like, Sila is just going to be a phenomenal talent. It's just pretty rare to have players come in on the wing that are that polished already. Like, Olivia does so much with, you know, her passing and driving as a, as a forward. Like, there's just – there's a lot to be excited about with this group and what you guys can yeah. do on both ends. Definitely. Um. Yeah, last thing on shot two, I think, again, like one of the things I always love is just shooter's touch. Like, I think this is one of those shots where you're like, okay. It's the bank. Just, yep, it's the bank. Um, You are, like, I know, like, obviously, I'm sure the intention here was not to use bank on, on the backboard because of the shrug. But um, you just have, like, a really good knack and tendency for being able to use the glass, even if it's not on shots, like, especially on, like, runners and, and everything you do with layups. Because, again, kind of like we're talking about, part of what's fun is like you have so much of the hard stuff like already down pat right now which is why like you know be getting you know improving on like okay doing stuff like sizing up and in, in isolation like that's stuff that people like you know okay cool I have that already but I have to learn how to shoot off movement like that stuff is really hard to do so I think it's it kind of just is an interesting testament to your game of like you you where it can keep going you know yeah no I agree I love I love the wide finish that's like probably my the favorite part of my game that I have like just getting it outside of my body even if I'm if if I'm running down the lane line and I don't have a great angle like I feel like I can still finish it at a pretty high clip um and even like posting up like I think we're going to incorporate that a little bit more this year and not that I even have to beat my defender but if I can just 
get my get my hand over there is like with the length that I have like I feel like it'll be pretty effective yeah that would be fun because like going back through your stuff too it's like yeah that wasn't really something you got to do this last year and I think like we're talking about with your size and and how much you guys can do attacking mismatches and switches this year like because I think you're going to see a lot of switches this year um like I think that yeah I mean being able to use your size against a lot of guards and even if it's not like you know, necessarily scoring, like, it's just, okay, I draw two, I make the right read and we keep the ball swinging. Like a lot right. of exciting stuff to look at with that. Um, mm-hmm. This is actually the last shooting one. Uh, this was again, just like kind of off that like twist action again, like doing stuff with just getting you going off movement. Um, and then into kind of like off the side step too. Like, I think this was probably one of your, my favorite shots from you this year. Cause again, you just showcase how difficult that is to do. Like it looks easy because it's open, but the reason you're open is not easy. So I think, again, that stuff always stands out for me. Yeah, this, I remember this shot was kind of tough. I was kind of surprised it went in. It was very tough. But again, like stuff that I think you can keep working in and, and getting to. Um, yeah. Because it's just, it's it's clean. Um, yeah, so now uh, I pulled a bunch of playmaking clips from the same game because I love getting to see people play against Nebraska because of how they hedge and it just makes you think differently. Um so I think this really got to show like a lot of like kind of how you read things and see things um, just like knowing automatically, okay, they're probably going to be trying to play with a lot of pressure and, and blitzing. How does that kind of adjust how you're going to come out handling this? Yeah, I know teams that hedge, like obviously you want to attack the post hip. Like I feel like I can do a better job when teams hedge us. Like I'm not, that's an area that I've been working on is off the ball screen. Um, mm-hmm. Just like coming off of it tight. But you know, if they're pressuring you, you probably can get a step on them. Like you just have to deal with that first amount of pressure, like and handling the ball. And then you can get a step and people are going to sink in, um, which is what happened here. I hit Kyra in the corner. Um, I love it. You remembered it before I even showed it. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Hesitations too. Like, I think that's huge when teams are pressuring you. Yeah. No, absolutely. And I, it's, it's funny. I, I really like you bringing that up too, in terms of talking about like, how you approach stuff off the screen because like again part of what makes you such a good shooter off movement is how like you your your angles off screens are immaculate like you are so good at cutting down how much space you take which inherently opens up more space for you and I think the biggest thing for you in like you know driving the basket off closeouts and, and attacking off ball screens and I think something you improved on throughout the year too is like like you said cutting down how many steps you take to get somewhere right because I think that just makes it you know, again, you keep, keeps that gap open for you and gets you more. Cause I think right now, especially like off drives, like you have such good touch in inside the arc and around the rim, but your finishes end up a little bit tougher than they could be because, you know, like if you take an extra step, it just makes it a little harder, but exactly. I mean, like that's that you already know that is like, it's pretty cool that you have that down already. Um, so again, like this one already know you that they're coming out to hedge and you're hitting the slip as soon as it's there. Um, it's just, again, like quick, efficient offense, good reads. Yeah, I feel like even sometimes off the ball screen, like you don't even have to dribble. Like obviously I was dribbling already here, but like if I had waited for her to come and Natalie Potts had shown, like I could have just thrown it to her without even dribbling. Like I think that's an effective way to handle hedges as well. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think so much of like beating a hedge is not trying to – like uh, you're, you're, you make a really great point with talking about hesitation, right? Cause, like – so often people see a hedge as a guard and they're like, okay, I just have to move the ball as fast as possible. And I think the best thing that you do here is like, okay, what if I just draw it out for another half second, make sure that it's shown and then I can get the ball moving. Because mm-hmm. if you try and just beat it too fast, then the rotation's easier. It's yeah, there's a lot of great understanding in that as well. Um, this one I like because you end up instead of, you know, like kind of taking the pick, you end up rejecting it before they can even blitz um into your pull-up too um again too like just looking at getting in your pull-up I mean like your release point and getting into that it's like that's okay you're just not getting bothered with that especially with their guards because Nebraska plays pretty small at the guard spot but um Mm -hmm. especially like in this too like obviously I think this shot is is very much open for you but when you're taking shots like this too because again I think something that you're gonna probably have to like think through it this this year as well like you know like how do you feel comfortable in, in the mid range and knowing like, okay, this is a shot I want to take versus, you know, what if I keep moving the ball and trying to find something else? Because 
Um, I think that's something that a lot of players, you know, in the mid range, if they're not maybe as used to scoring and that is something that they kind of have to, you know, go through in their head a little bit. Yeah, I think it's two things like just getting a ton of reps with it in, in workouts, but also like hitting a, a quick one two like and getting balance. Like I think my pull up is so much more effective if I can like really get my hips down and get into my shot like this one. I don't even I wasn't even very balanced like. I thought I was fading too much. Like, I think I could have mm -hmm. stopped even like a step earlier um, and just gone like a quick one, two instead of a hop. Um, but I think like, just like really setting myself down and like getting, put, putting force like into the ground to come yeah. straight up um, instead of fading. I think that's when um, like anyone's pull up is most effective. And like when I feel most comfortable with it. Yeah. That's such a great point too. Cause like so much of getting to, your best jumper is like, okay, making sure I'm stable, making sure that I don't have any momentum away from the basket. And I think even with finishes too, like if you're driving and you're trying something offhand while you're still going forwards, like, okay, it's probably going to miss unless you have like, you know, the touch of God in your hand, it's, it's, it's going to be really hard to put that in the basket. Um, but exactly. Like, I think again, like having as much stability as possible is so key, but um, yeah, this one, again, I just like just really good patience on this one to me. You, you mentioned that hesitation earlier, and I think you show getting into that. Um, obviously, off the drive, getting into that baseball pass, like you mentioned. Um, what like Kind of going back through this one, is there anything else that you see about, like, would you do anything differently, or what do you like about this play? Um, I, I wish Woody had stayed in the corner because she probably would have gotten an open three. Um, but I, I don't really see anything else. I like the hesitation at the top just because it does freeze the defender, but I like to see my options. Um, I think it gets my head up and like I can read the defense just quickly. Like I can see that um, that girl's coming to the paint. Like I could have even hit Taylor Woodson right now, um, but I drew her in a little bit more. So, yeah, no, I agree. I like because like you mentioned, I think part of what's really good about a Hezzy is like, all right, cool. It gives you a moment to scan too instead of like mm -hmm. being so fast because again I think so many guards think like all right I just need to get downhill as fast as possible and like sometimes it's great but also it just you're not going to beat people off a of line drive most of the time and you're right. also hurting yourself because it's just so rare to like okay nobody can like process the game fast enough to make that that pass going full speed right so it's like you know you need to be able to slow yeah. down and see that um, I wish I also hit Elise on the cut that would have been that would have been nice yeah, that one uh, was probably the only one I was thinking of. Like, all right, the cut could have been there, but, like, it's, you know, easier said than done. Um, but it's still, like, a good play that you can see overall. Um, yeah, this one, too. So this is my one of my favorite drives from you this year uh, because all the stuff we've talked about with, like, again, using the hesitation, playing with strength. I think this is, again, like, Adelia is a really good defender, especially, like, being a player who's a little bit smaller but really strong and can kind of get up into you. I think using your shoulder here was huge because I think a lot of times there'll be like, you know, if you're coming down, you try and throw up more of an offhand, which again, you're good at doing. Um, but I think being able to like barrel down like this, use your size, mm -hmm. like you you actually get to use your size size advantage when you come down with your shoulder. It's, it's like, I don't know, it's, it's like odd how to like say it, but like when you're taller and somebody is trying to get up into you, sometimes the best way to play with your advantage is to play smaller and like get into them too and I think it's just you know a really great advantage here yeah I completely agree like the outside inside finish or like outside foot inside um has been something we've been working on a lot I mean the theme of this call has just been like balance yeah <laughs> but um I mean I think it's super effective like and my ability to finish like on the outside of my body if I'm balanced going into that like I don't think anyone can really block it and especially if I have a like shorter defender on me no matter like how strong they are yeah. um I think it's pretty effective yeah absolutely and I think it's interesting too because like I would say that you're somebody I would consider like you play stronger than I think people maybe realize like um especially like similarly to like JC Sheldon in Ohio State like somebody who like very yeah. lim like people just have a tendency to look at somebody who's like maybe like a little bit lankier a little bit more limby and they're like oh they're not strong like I think you do a lot of things playing with strength particularly on defense which I'm actually going to skip ahead and get us to defense right now so we can get you out of here fast enough um but yeah I think just looking at your defense as a whole like I think particularly against Kansas too like um Holly Kersky is a really good shooter, somebody who they used a ton in terms of like just movement stuff and getting her going. Um, it's not anything like crazy here, but like just being able to show like, okay, 
I think you show that same ability to get around screens on defense as you do on offense. Um, again, it's just like, they just kind of work like a little bit of like a boomerang stuff to get it back to the corner. And yeah, I think like you do get hit by the screen, but I, again, with the recovery, I like what you do. Like, that's just, you know, it, a lot of it comes down to communication stuff. How do you feel about this clip though? Cause I know I've had some people say that they feel differently about their, their own clips than me. Um, I mean, I think on the flare, I could have tagged onto her hip better. Like yeah. I, I didn't see it. She was already moving. Um, I should have had my head on a swivel a little better, but I think I like recovered fairly well. I think mm -hmm. the biggest thing with my defense, like I'm not the quickest, but like using my length, um, just like getting a hand up, I think affected that shot for her quite a bit. Yeah, exactly. Cause I think that's part of why I pulled this one. Cause I know like, obviously, yeah, you don't want to get tagged by the flare, but I like exactly like you're saying, I think, you get to showcase, okay, I'm long, I'm agile, I can get to where I need to. I think most people, if they get hit by this flare without seeing it, are not being or are not going to be able to get back in that place. So being able to do that is again huge because I think so much of like you at the next level is talking about, and even just this year, like, all right, if you're guarding other players who are, you know, who are wing size that that can shoot off movement, that's just as hard as being a player who can shoot off movement is being able to guard that. So um it's good stuff that you're able to show. Yeah. In that same game too, a lot of switching. And I think when we talk about like playing some of the strength stuff, I think you do a really good job of like riding out drives to the rim and just using your hips. Um, and Samaya is like, for anybody who hasn't watched Kansas, like just ridiculously strong driver. Like you take a charge on her pretty soon here. This like, I don't know if you remember that charge, but it was like tough. Um, she is, yeah, just very, very strong. So like being able to like, again, like use that, Kind of like we talked about on the other end, like being able to use your length in this too as well, like get into somebody, but then use your length to make sure they don't get to the rim is huge. Yeah. I mean, if I can get them outside of the block, like I feel like I'm doing my job and then like, it's already a hard to finish. And if I have my hands up, like, I feel like not a lot of people, you have to be a, a very skilled finisher to get that off and, and get that angle. Right. So, um, I prefer not to let her drive middle, but I guess I did the best with what I could. So, yeah, I mean, I, it's the hard part. Like sometimes, like I know you guys never really want to give up middle, but at the same time as well, like it just sometimes it happens. It's hard to, it's hard to play in isolation with how the game is officiated now, but yeah. Um, yeah, this one too. I wanted to ask about this one because I know like you, you don't want to let this happen, but like just the difficulty of defending movement actions like this, I think Indiana to me is probably, um up there with you guys but I would say Indiana in the Big Ten was probably like the most pro style offense that anybody's going to run mm -hmm. with how much movement they have with how much shooting they have um I think that to me this just hammers home the importance of like communication on, on ball screens and any kind of like off ball stuff too um you know with defending this team as well like again we see the recovery as well which I think stands out but like when you again like preparing for a team like that that is so difficult to defend um, what, what is maybe stands out to you is like probably the most important aspect. Well, we, I remember we were, we wanted to switch everything this game yeah. except for with the five. And I think for the most part, like we did a very good job. Um, I, I think on this play in specific, I, um, I thought they were just like cutting through and not screening Layla. Mm -hmm. Um, so I didn't think that we were going to switch, but, um, yeah, I mean, obviously, communication is just the biggest thing when you're switching one through four. Like, I that was super effective for us that game, but there were definitely some breakdowns. And I know there were, like, when when Holmes came in the game later, um, I remember there were a few plays that Scalia got some clean looks off of. Well, she's, yeah, she was a tough guard, so understandable. But I think it's, again, it sticks out, too, because, like, all right, cool. Well, it's hard because you don't want to give Garzone – any kind of room because again like they try to do some stuff posting you up a little bit in this game too um they tried to have her take you off the bounce you know out of the high post like there's just like there are so many different actions that they can run out of anything that that makes it difficult so yeah more just kind of like yeah there's so much that you have to think through and and under like again it's not even about like having like a good player or bad play against indiana so like you have to guard seven things in a possession it's not just one thing that they're running at you right so it makes it you know it's just kind of showcasing that awareness and and how much you have to be on top of it yeah definitely um I did want to close out with just like a few from Ole Miss as well because like I know that this game did not go how you guys want it but I think in terms of showcasing again 
being able to be a player who who does like I, I believe you guys were switching quite a bit in this game um, because they were just like I mean they're so good playing off the dribble it's mostly a dribble drive offense this is the charge I meant yeah um, Markeisha is like she was one of the best drivers and finishers in in, in basketball this year um, but I think again using those angles getting to your spot is is big time and something that you were able to do a lot this year yeah I think also just like getting I like playing at the four because I'm low a lot. So mm -hmm. I can just like read where the, the the offense is going and where the drivers are headed. Um, but just like get being able to get behind the the post player and release from her, um, I think just like set me up for that charge. Yeah, I also love that you went behind the post player. Like I think like I know that's part of the defense, but you just do a good job of making sure that okay, cool, I'm not giving you easy position. Um always being active and, and making sure that things are a fight, I think is really important. Um, this one too, again, just showcasing, I think, especially when you can use like baseline and sideline, you're so good at keeping people in front. Like this one to me, like Kennedy's a really good dribbler player who can attack, um, but you just do a good job. Stay big, stay in the gap. Don't let anything happen. Um, and obviously get the ball moved out. And then this one um, to me, I like this a lot. Cause I think it just kind of shows like, when you talk about being at the four, they there were a lot of times this year where you were allowed to just kind of like um, no personnel and play in the gap. And that to me, like, I I mean, this is it's, it's solid defense from Layla to, to contest this as well. But I think just like having an extra person there with hands up makes that really difficult knowing like, OK, Markeisha is a player who shot like 25 percent from three, just didn't really take them this year. Was that kind of like mm -hmm. the assignment, like knowing, like, OK, well, I can, I can roam off a little bit when she's at the three point line. Yeah, and it's also just, like, personnel. Like, this girl was shooting every time she drove to the paint. So, like, you did this I, game, yeah. I was assuming she's not probably going to pass it out. And my girl wasn't even really looking at the ball um, and just kind of filling to the corner. So, I knew I could I could help in and just be, like, an extra set of hands there. Definitely. Um, yeah, again, showcasing your ability to get through screens. I've said showcasing, like, 8,000 times on this. But – um, yeah, I think again, just getting through, through that screen tight, like, like you talked about earlier on, on getting on the floor, like kind of hip tagging. I like this mm -hmm. a lot just because again, like, I think so often people think like to get off of something, I need to get away from it, but really the best way is get into it and get around it. Right. And I think you do a good job yeah. of doing that here. And then this is just, a, I mean, that's really tough to hit when, when you're coming off that. Um, and especially to like, I thought you had some really, really great moments playing against Markeisha in this game. And just in general, you had great possessions throughout the season on defense. But, um, yeah, this game stood out a lot to me and going back and kind of seeing some of the stuff on the defensive end. Um, yeah, I also, like, I don't think it – I feel like some people, like, shy away from getting hit by a screen. And obviously you don't want to get, like, plastered and, like, straight into their chest. But, like, if you hit the screener's hip, like, that's fine. Like, you're going off it the same way that the offense is going off of it. So – as long as you're like attached to to your girl, then then you're probably pretty solid. Yeah, no, that's such a great point. Jordan, honestly, like that, that's that's all I got for film. That wraps everything up. I really am super appreciative of your time. This was a delight. I enjoy getting to know you and kind of see how you see things. Is there anything, uh, you know, just to kind of close out a little bit, is there anything that you're maybe most looking forward to this season, uh, closing out on showcasing? I mean, what are you most excited to showcase this year and kind of what you can do and, and what you guys are going to be like as a team? Yeah, I mean, for my own game, I'm just, like, I'm excited to play even more free than last year. I feel like I'll get an even bigger leash a little bit, especially offensively, um, just to, to show what I can do. Um, I feel like um, I'll just be able to, like, show some more moves, so show my game a little bit more. I mean, I had that a little bit last year, and people caught a glimpse of it, but um, I feel like more possessions will will be given to me to, to do that. Um, I'm also just excited for – for some new girls. Um, they're all super hard workers. And I mean, I think we're going to surprise a lot of people, to be honest. And I, I feel like we say that every year, but um, I, Michigan has typically just been like under the radar and um, the big Ten's a gauntlet. Like there's, there's not a game you can take off, but I think we're going to get some wins that people are, are shocked and, and look twice at, at on the, in the box score. So well, I agree. I'm very excited to watch you guys. I have a, definitely an, an idea of how I think it's going to come together in my head, and I'm, I'm excited to watch you guys put that to paper. Um, Jordan, I appreciate your time. To everyone watching, of course, subscribe if you haven't already. Keep up with all the other film room series that we have out so far. And most importantly, enjoy the rest of your day.